Welcome one, welcome all to your wonderful, lovely show on a Friday night here with Maponga J live at your program of choice, Sankofa. Discussing and looking backwards at the future, seeking for a better future for ourselves and our children. Not a dull moment on this program. I know it's a women's month, but in the midst of discussing many other women's things, we decided to take a small little detour and have a conversation again around the space of religious influence or the societal issues. And I got a brilliant guest for you today by the name of Jay Israel, all the way from Durban. Google him up, check him up on your social media space. He has got enough dust that is running behind him. But I'm not here today to be discussing tabloids. I want to dig into his mind as a minister and a greater issue around the callings and etc. And we're going to have a wonderful time uh, together with him in studio tonight. Greet the people out there and uh, tell us who is Jay Israel. <laughs> wow, thank you so much, Bishop. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me on your platform. Uh, I'm really honored. Um, Jay Israel is the, is me. Okay. Yeah, that's the shortest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, I know, I know you're being polite. Just give us a little bit of a background where you're coming from and just okay. so that some viewers out there can plug yeah. into you. Um, my, my real name, mm -hmm. let me start from there. My real name is uh, Jacob. Mm -hmm. So J is short for Jacob. Okay. Yeah, then Israel was my own uh, interpretation that I did to the name Jacob. Okay. Based on the scriptures and other personal things, you know, that, uh, that, had, happened know, uh, that had happened to me. So uh, there's a testimony uh, behind that name? But there's a very big testimony on that name. Okay. Yeah, very big one. So uh, born and bred in Zimbabwe, uh, grew up in Blawayo. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, which part of the just next to the flats in So we were in the same location. Yeah, I was just around the corner there in Pumula. Hold it right there, hold it right there. Let's just play one of the beautiful videos that he has done. Just to introduce you to the man himself and you can get to hear him in his own element. Here is the small little video clip. Zimbabweans are being oppressed by the evil regime. So many prophets in Africa cannot speak against uh, 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 evil African presidents because they know that they are benefiting at night from the evil government uh, 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 that they are submitting to. For example, in Zimbabwe, as we speak right now, only one person in Zimbabwe that I know, one, has managed to stand up as a preacher to speak against the evil regime and the evil government of Zimbabwe. The truth is the truth. The government of Zimbabwe is evil. It is an evil government that is oppressing its own people. And the prophets of Zimbabwe, they do not have the power and the authority to speak against the evil government of Zimbabwe because they are benefiting from the evil system of Zimbabwe. If things do not change in the nation of Zimbabwe, the president of Zimbabwe, who is the current president right now in Zimbabwe, is going to die a very painful death. Because of the oppression that they are putting on the people of Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is a Christian nation. Zimbabwe is a Christian country. Zimbabwe belongs to God. All this evil oppression that is going on in the country of Zimbabwe, why arrest a, an honest a individual who is helping you to expose criminals? Because you are afraid that even your names as those high politicians in Zimbabwe will also be exposed. That is why you are now arresting the poor guy. Release that poor journalist. He has a family to take care of. He's earning a living out of an honest uh, whatever that he's doing in journalism. Release him. When the president of Zimbabwe got into power, he said we are going to arrest all the corrupt politicians. Now there is a man who is helping you to expose corruption. You are arresting him. So what do you stand for? What do you stand for? What do you stand for? What does the government of Zimbabwe stand for? What do you stand for? 
Are you in power to empower people or you are in power to kill the people? Yeah, there you heard for yourself, the men uh, bellowing it out, prophets for sale. In the generation and the times that we are living in, we have seen quite a supermarket of religions that are taking place on the face of the earth. And African pastors are not exempted from the corruption and the evil that the Catholic Church in its totality has constantly drummed on the heads and minds of the people, including Eurocentric Christianity. I want to take and grill this pastor next to me here and take him through a journey of what it means to be a minister and where you're coming from. You're still doing an introduction, born in Bulawayo. Yes, Let's just yes. pick up from there and <laughs> then again, before I can start punching. Uh, okay, B before you get to the grilling part, uh. Uh, may I be the one to grill you first? Ah. I, I, I <laughs> can't, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, this is my show. <laughs> <laughs> may I just, uh, just allow me to take over your show okay. just for a minute. Okay. A, a Bishop, there's a question that I want to ask. Mm. Personally, uh, I would like to understand. Mm. I believe uh, 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 after I understand that question, then I can uh, 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 properly flow like water, you mm. know, flow like milk, mm. you know. <laughs> Bishop, there's, um, there's a statement that you echoed in one of your uh, uh, broadcasts that you mm. did in the past. Uh, you mentioned something about a black Jesus. Mm. You mentioned something about Christ. Mm. You mentioned something about Jesus um, not dying for the black people, mm. uh, 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 something along those lines, you know. And, and many people said, no, B Bishop is, 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 is not a Christian anymore. You know, many have said yeah, demon and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, I just want to understand, Bishop, mm. wh what is your uh, 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 explanation on Christ and Jesus and, yeah. The colonial project was real. Okay. And at the end of the day, what you find is that the naming of Christ, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the usage of iconography, okay. and the pictures that are painted of Jesus, okay. they are not biblical. All right. They, neither are they founded on the scriptures. Okay. The okay. scripture says don't make yourself any griven true, images. True. So it's not only bad to make griven images, okay. it's okay. also wrong to make the wrong image of the wrong commandment altogether. The commandment okay. condemns you, and yet you go ahead and do it, and you do it again. And by the way, when you argue that mm -hmm. Christ mm -hmm. is no mm -hmm. ethnicity, okay. then you are denying that he was not born at all. Okay. If you are a really human being, mm -hmm. born onto this earth, mm -hmm. and it give you a mother, and it give you a father, okay. and it give you a culture, okay. and it give you color of complexion, mm -hmm. then you are human. Mm -hmm. So by people saying, does not matter, what is it? you're actually denying the fundamentals of Christianity. Okay. I okay. am not denying mm -hmm. that there was a Messiah okay. who was born in Palestine. Okay. I'm not denying that there was Emmanuel mm -hmm. who was born in, a, in Palestine. My problem is Eurocentric Christianity okay. that has commercialized wrong iconographies, wrong pictures around the Messiah and okay. push them down on black people. Every time I think about that Christ, mm -hmm. the white mm -hmm. Christ, okay. I'm actually dealing with an abomination of the scripture mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. Bible condemns mm -hmm. that iconography. Okay. Are we okay? Well, um, 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 uh, I'll put it in this way. Mm. Uh, so we, we both uh, 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 agree mm. that uh, there is Christ. Mm. We both agree that there is Jesus. Maybe before we continue, we, we both that, agree about Christ, we both agree on Jesus. You want me to become philosophical or simple? No, no, no. Uh, let's become a, a, a divine. Divine. The scriptures yeah, say, the scrip the scriptures yes, say so. Yes, yes. And if the evidence is in the scripture, yes. who am I to argue with it? Okay. So it is there. It's written. Uh -huh. He was born, he lived, he died, uh -huh. he resurrected. What can I say? Do you believe in Christ? I believe in a Messiah who serves, okay. who serves his people. Okay. But the picture right now of do you believe in Christ mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he comes to us in the white European perspective. perspective. White Jesus. I also don't believe in the white Jesus, by the and way. And we're on the same page. Because the white Jesus is the one that you grew up knowing. Mm, yeah. You know, from a uh, young age, mm. whenever we, we talk about Jesus, we talk about the white man hanging on the cross mm. with the blonde hair, blue eyes. Mm. You know, that's the, the Jesus that we know. Mm. But I personally, you know, mm. also don't believe that mm. that is the Jesus okay. uh, uh, who died for us. Now you're in trouble. Uh -huh. Now, show me the black Jesus and what he has done. When it comes to my understanding of Christ and mm. my understanding of Jesus, mm. I, I, I would like to take away the, the, the ethnicity of Christ. Mm. You know, I, I would like to put it aside. Mm. I believe that's a, a conversation for a different day. Mm. But for now, I would like to say he died for all men. 
And the fact that he died for all men, that means the blacks are involved, the whites are involved, Indians are involved, so everybody. So if we take away the ethnicity, then we, we, we just uh, base our facts on the Bible and the scriptures. We, we're, we're on the same page, <laughs> though we will be missing each other here and there. Okay, okay. Because by, by putting aside his ethnicity, mm -hmm, as I'm mm -hmm. saying, okay. we're actually undermining a very essential part okay. of being a, a, a human being on earth. Mm -hmm. You cannot be a human being on earth who does not have ethnicity. And the discomfort mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of the African to discuss the ethnicity of Christ mm -hmm, only mm -hmm. shows the extent of the damage. Okay. Because if we're comfortable with him being a black messiah born amongst us, he mm. grew up across the river here, <laughs> here in Egypt, a few rivers from here. But we'd rather not talk about that. We'd rather talk about salvation. Okay. And on the issue mm -hmm. of a white messiah, mm -hmm. then when I'm saying Jesus did not die for the black man, mm -hmm. I'm saying why must the death of the messiah only be associated with, with, uh, with, with our poverty, okay. w when in fact, mm -hmm. the means of salvation must be, he came to set the captives free, okay. number one. Okay. He came so that we may have life and mm -hmm. have life more mm -hmm. abundantly. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So basically, the, messianic, the Messiah, I believe in, okay. he's the one who addresses the oppressed. Mm -hmm. He does mm -hmm. not come with the oppressor. So right now, when you talk about the Messiah and you want to sit him with the colonizer, <laughs> then me and you are parting ways right there. Because I want him to say, <laughs> we must have life and have life more abundantly as poor people. Uh -huh. okay. I think that's out of the way. Back to you, sir. Can I shoot? <laughs> <laughs> This is a very long one, but I'll, I'll leave it. You leave it to flow. At least we, we, we've got Christ, and, and let's continue. Okay. <laughs> I mean, for the sake of those who, yes, for yes. the sake of those who think otherwise, mm -hmm, in your mm -hmm. own world, what yes. is the calling for the ministry? Uh, you see, um, when when we talk about a calling, you know, um, a, 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 the Bible makes it very clear that uh, to some he made them to be apostles, mm -hmm. and uh, to some he gave them. Now, now I'm defining the fivefold ministry. You know. Mm -hmm. Uh, to some, he made them to be ap apostles. He called them to be apostles. Mm -hmm. And to some, he called them to be prophets, uh, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about a calling, mm -hmm. I'm talking about separation, a, a, a process of being separated from a normal human being mm -hmm. to a special kind of person that God wants to use for a specific purpose to fulfill a, set, uh, a specific mandate here on earth. Mm -hmm. So now when you are called by God, when mm -hmm. God is calling you, uh, he is definitely setting you apart. Mm. It means your lifestyle has to be different. In as much as you are just as good as everyone, we mm. are. We are sitting here right now. Uh, uh, not everybody is called. Mm. Uh, not everybody is called into ministry. Mm. You know, but everybody can have a gift. Mm. But not everyone is called. Mm. So, 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 when God is calling you, setting you apart, mm. He wants you either to be a prophet, pastor, apostle, teacher. A evangelist, mm. depending on which uh, office he's mm. putting you into. Mm. Yeah, you are giving us a big definition, okay. which you have to define backwards uh -huh. because uh -huh. we're going to be going back. That right. is the ideal uh -huh. of uh -huh. the calling of ministry. Right. And one right. of my authors I can't remember who wrote. He says, "Many are called, mm -hmm. but a, a few, few are, are frozen. frozen. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. They are frozen in their own ways right. and right. their own behavior." Uh -huh. When you give me a, such an illustrious definition of mm -hmm. ministry mm -hmm. and what is a calling, okay, let's let's dive right into it. Mm -hmm. When you look at the modern structure okay. of ministry and what the definitions that are giving me, are modern pastors living to the expectations of that calling? A, uh, Bishop, I'll, I'll put it in this way. You know, um, a lot has changed. We are living in the 21st century. You know, um, mm. a, a, a lot has changed. The, the, the church that we have today mm. is not the church that we had back in those days. Mm -hmm. And, 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 you know, looking at the, the, the modern day pastors, the mm. modern day prophets, the modern day apostles, mm. so many people uh, are now addicted to being called by God, mm. yet they are not called by God. Mm. Because you don't wake up overnight and become a prophet. That's mm. number one. You don't wake up overnight and become an apostle. Mm. You don't wake up overnight and become a pastor or a teacher. Mm. You have to be called from birth, just mm. like what the Bible says, that Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's womb, mm. I already had a plan for you. And I ordained you. I ordained you anointed you, appointed you mm. for the people. So we have a lot of people who are not ordained, who are not appointed, and who are not anointed for any specific... Uh, uh, so, but they're so, functioning. So, so they are functioning. They are, remember, that is why we've got Bible school. I'm not against Bible school, but we've got a lot of them who have gone to Bible school to improvise mm. because they are not called and they want to be pastors. Mm. You know, calling bishop is not about 
uh, uh, you feeling like you are a preacher. Mm. It's not about you feeling like you, you've been called by God. Mm. A calling will direct your path. Mm. A calling will, will, will dictate how you live your life. Maybe let me cut to the chase. Uh -huh. How do you know that you are called? How, I'm, I'm a member. Okay. I'm a common member. Uh -huh, uh -huh, how uh -huh. do I tell that this is a man of God? And H, La, Zabu Yagela. This one I might have to take with a pinch of salt. How okay. do you tell mm -hmm. the difference between a person or a pastor, okay. evangelist, or whatever? Is, this one is cold. Okay. This one is frozen. Um. Hey, <laughs> how do you tell? Yeah. I, I think let's 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 go back to the to the to the beginning. Mm. You know, um, the, the 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 first thing is before you try to ask yourself, is this one a man of God or he's not? You know, we have mm. to look at the lifestyle. Mm. We have to look at the fruits. Mm. The Bible says, by the fruits you shall know them. Mm. You know, by 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 what you you produce and and what comes out of your mouth, mm -hmm. how you live your life. You know, mm -hmm. that's how we can tell that are you cold or not. Mm -hmm. We do, we don't tell that you are cold by the 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 you know the eloquence of mm -hmm. your speech and mm -hmm. uh, uh, knowing how to interpret you know certain uh, scriptures and certain things. You know, you, you, your fruits have to speak for you. Mm -hmm. I'm coming to a point now, Bishop, where I, I, I'm I'm now saying, I don't want to personally. I don't want to preach. A message that is going to confuse people mm. but I want my lifestyle mm. to, to be a, a you know to be a message on its own when, when people look at me they must say we see Jesus here mm. you know it's not about me convincing them you know mm. I'm not coming with the with the mince words of uh, you know uh, uh, an intelligent person who's trying to uh, persuade people to believe what I'm saying mm. I'm not saying do as I say I'm saying do as I do. Where do you think the church lost it? I mean, I hear, I hear you. Mm -hmm. you you're, you're giving us the ideal. Yes. I'll yes. keep on pulling, keep on pulling the rope okay. this way. Okay. Because okay. there's a big gap mm -hmm. between the ideal church okay. and the real church. Right. The ideal minister, mm -hmm. man of God, okay. and the ministers of God that okay. we seem to be having on the market right now. Mm -hmm. Where do you think the church lost it? I was, I was uh, just a few, a few days ago. I was uh, uh, teaching on a title, church capture. Mm. You know, so with this question, it actually relates with what I was talking about, mm. that the church has been captured. By who? The church has been captured by the men of cloth. By the pastors. The church has been captured by the pastors. We need another Zondo commission, please, for the churches. When, yeah? when God says to Moses, go and tell Pharaoh, mm. Pharaoh was not a religious man. He was a political man. Mm. Back in those days, the church was captured by politics. Mm. But in our time, politics is out. That is why po politicians, politics and everything will never have respect for church. Mm. The church will never have a voice because the church is captured by its own people. Those who are support when the deliverer needs deliverance, that is the scenario that we have, mm. that we have right now. We have got men posing as deliverers, yet they are the ones who need to be delivered before mm. they can begin to do the whole deliverance thing. Mm. So the church is captured by the prophets, and I'll be very blunt on this one. The church is captured by the false prophets, is captured by the fake prophets. I call them charlatans. I call them jackals, foxes, thieves, and robbers. The Bible says they speak yet I've not given them a message to speak. They claim to speak on my behalf, yet they do not know me. Mm. These are the people who have captured the church. Mm. And the fact that the church is captured does not mean that we do not have authentic men of God mm. and authentic voices. They are there, but they've been overshadowed. Mm. Wow. When we come back after the break, I want to sue Jay Lazarus here for collecting tithes. <laughs> Jay Israel. Uh, Jay is Israel. Jay Lazarus. Israel. No, no. Jay Israel. I want, to, I want to sue him here for collecting tithes and he does not bring us a receipt from Jesus. Don't go away just after the break. Okay. God is so amazing. Feel the heat. The Bible says that through his death on the cross, we are now reconciled with our Father. Forgive and you shall be forgiven. So wherever God takes us, we're just excited about it. As a child of God, where you are, you must have an hour of prayer. Feel the excitement. 
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I believe that God is working right now. Feel the heat with Starset. Hello. Being a legal practitioner in South Africa in these challenging times demands lawyers that will help clients beyond legal issues. The ever-changing demands in commerce and tourism require lawyers who have sound and clear business and commercial knowledge. And that's where MB Chabang Incorporated comes in. Our business, mining, tourism, health, labor, and economic knowledge encapsulated with law and litigation experience gives us an advantage in the legal sphere. Our experience in assisting businesses, government, and various industries with their needs puts us amongst the many progressive and striving law firms in South Africa. Now, to contact our attorneys for assistance with any of the mentioned fields and others, please call us on 012-341-4187 or send us an email on admin at chabanku.co.zeri and be Chabanku Incorporated, where problems meet solutions. In the studio with me today is uh, Pastor Jay Israel, uh, all the way from Durban, taking us through some paces of the issues that are happening, uh, happening around the church. And just mm. before we went out for the break, you were spitting fire and brimstone there to the charlatans, the foxes, and the hyenas that are masquerading themselves mm -hmm. as, uh, as, as pastors, sure. when in fact sure. they are sure. not pastors at all. Yeah. Does the system have a way of governing itself, managing itself, peer reviewing itself, so that ministers can actually be calling each other to order when someone goes out of line? How does it function in the church here? You see, uh, Bishop, in the, when, when fathers are silent, even stones will begin to utter nonsense. Mm. I believe that in the body of Christ, before we bring in the, 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 uh, uh, the outside force, which does not have an, a clear understanding of divinity and how things in the body of Christ operate, I believe in, within the body of Christ, we, we have fathers mm. who went ahead of us, mm. you know, fathers in, in ministry, mm. those who went ahead of us. Those are the voices that are supposed to be addressing such things. Mm. It, is, it is surprising and shocking mm. that up to now, mm. we, we, we do not have uh, our fathers. We have got a strong voice in the body of Christ globally, not only in South Africa, not only in Africa, but all over the world. Mm. Fathers are quiet. I'll tell you why they are quiet. They are quiet because during the day, they are preaching Christ, mm. but at night, they are in beds with the charlatans. They are dining and whining with the charlatans. Charlatans are bringing big envelopes to the fathers. So fathers are not able to address charlatans anymore mm. because they are benefiting from their robbery, from their mm. a, a theft and everything that they are doing to the people. Mm. Social injustice, injustice, theft, and everything that they are doing to the people, they are benefiting from that. Wow. wow. Let's, let's punch right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What role has money played? into changing the playing field or the playing field of Christianity. What, what, what do you think, the, what has been the influence mm -hmm. of money, whether we call it tithe, call it offerings, okay. I don't know, but okay. let's just call it money okay. for what it is worth. Okay. We can classify it later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what role has money played in buying, in diluting, mm -hmm. in confusing, okay. in adulterating the entire Christian space? Okay. Uh, you know, uh, Bishop, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in this way. When, when, when Jesus eh, 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 arrived at the temple, the Bible says he found people in the temple, not outside the temple. Inside. Not canteens outside. Not eh, eh, people were cooking pap and flace outside. Inside the church. He found these people selling uh, sheep, uh, money changers on the altar. Now, when I interpret the money changing part, that is what we see on the altar. The Bible does not say money is bad, but the Bible said the love of money mm. is the root of all evil. And the absence of it also. And the absence of it also <laughs> is, is a problem. So, 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 so you, and at the same time, you cannot save two masters. Mm. And when the Bible is talking about saving two masters, it is talking about either you save mammon, mm. which is money, mm. or you save God. Mm. So in our time, mm. we no longer have 
are, are, are preachers who are serving God, mm. but they are now serving mammon. That is why we now have money changers on the altar. Mm. So money has played the biggest role ever to, 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 to dilute things in the body of Christ, to confuse everybody, you know, mm. because right now, you, you know, when you get into a service, there's seven different offerings. There's sin offering, there's mm. a, a, a pastor's offering, mm. there's a, a chair offering, there's tithe, there's prophetic seed, there's seed for a uh, for, bl uh, for, 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 for blessing, there's seed for breakthrough, there's seed for this. I mean, all those, all those, te all, you know, all those terms, that mm. terminology, seed for this, seed for that, mm. that is mammon <clears throat> at work mm. in the church, within mm. the circumference of the church, that is mammon at work. Money. Money is at work. The love money, of money. The love of Being money the root of all has evil. destroyed everything. Can I ask you a more serious question right yes. there? Yeah. This issue of, uh, of, of, uh, of, of money mm -hmm. uh, and its uh, tentacles okay. around the altar, mm. uh, where, where, who, who do they take it on behalf of? Definitely on behalf of God. Question number two. Uh -huh. Good answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Question number two. On, on, on God's behalf. On God's behalf. Not on their behalf. On God's behalf. If, if they claim it on their behalf, no one will give. Question number two. Uh -huh. Do we have a receipt that the money you have collected, mm -hmm. Jesus has received? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I will say uh, all the best. You, yeah. The day you find the receipt, I'll be happy to also put my signature on okay. it. Okay. <laughs> so there's no receipt. <laughs> there's no receipt for that. Question number three. Mm -hmm. When a woman loses a husband, mm -hmm. God says, I am a husband mm -hmm. to the widows. Okay. And I'm a father to the orphans. Uh -huh. When we are collecting tithes and offerings, mm -hmm. we say we're collecting it mm -hmm. for God. Mm -hmm. Hear the question well. Okay. Then why do we, dis why do we deprive the woman, the widow, uh -huh. the money that belongs to her husband. Mm. <laughs> I, I I'll go back to... to, to but you get the question. I, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll go back to Malachi. Yes. The most uh, uh, famous scripture ever. Bring you know, all the tithes in, and in offerings. The church. Bring you all the tithes and offerings. So that... Uh, so that there may be food in the storehouse. Okay. That's where I, I wanted to go to. Yes. Who has access to the storehouse according to the Levitical order? That's where we have to start. Mm. The, it's not the, 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 the saints. Mm. It's not the children of God. It's not, mm. the, it's not the members. Mm. Let me put it that way. The members do not have access to the storehouse. Mm. For the storehouse is kept by the Levites. Mm. Those are the ones who have got access to the storehouse. Mm. They collect tithes on behalf of God. Mm. So before we even talk about tithes, Bishop, mm. let's begin to ask. Personally, uh, uh, I don't collect tithes. Mm. I used to back in the, in the days, but then I stopped. I don't collect tithes. I do not collect uh, a prophetic seed for this money, for this money, you for that. Just offerings. No, if, if, if whatever that I say, people must do. Mm. Do it out of love. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Key word is love. Mm. According to the New Testament, according to the uh, a new covenant. Mm. You know, the grace dispensation. Mm. We do not give with a gun on our heads. We give out of love. Mm. So if you love God, you will give. Mm. If you love what you are, uh, 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 the message, mm. if the message is changing your life, you will give. Why? Why are modern pastors finding it difficult mm -hmm. to openly acknowledge that the tithes and offerings they are collecting, they are for themselves? Rather than lie. Mm -hmm. to say they are collecting it for the poor and the widows. But at the end of the day, when you pick up the balance sheet okay. of how much money was collected this mm -hmm. month mm -hmm. and how many people have eaten okay. from the tithes and offerings, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. will you justify that we gave you 100,000 and out of the 100,000, I have actually distributed 80,000, 20,000 are paid for my rents and etc. so that I can also survive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why, why is the modern pastor conflicted Mm -hmm. on sharing tithes and offerings according to the biblical text mm -hmm. that says it's for the widows, mm -hmm. the orphans, mm -hmm. the strangers, and the musicians. Greed. We, we, have, we have a lot of greedy pastors. By the way, let me, let me not say pastors. Mm. Uh, when, when I talk about, uh, uh, because not, not everyone is in that, is in that basket, mm. you know. 
not everyone is in that I hear basket. You. I not, hear you. not every pastor. So now I'm speaking on behalf of uh, the good ones. Mm. I'm speaking on behalf of the good ones. The few apples. The few apples. In the midst of the in many the mixture rotten. of the m m many rotten apples. Mm. So th there's still the few people who have a proper understanding of uh, a, a we should feed the, the, the widows and, and all that. Mm. But, but, but look, um, in our time, greed is, is coming to play. Mm. So we, we take things on behalf of God mm -hmm. and we, we personalize it. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you why. Because in our time, our Prophets, pastors, apostles, and all of them, they have now assumed the position of God. Mm. They have now assumed the position of Christ demigods. himself. They have, they have become demigods. In your own words, what do you think is the foundation of the present church? What is the foundation of the church right now? If I should say, cut, cut out the painting, okay. the cosmetics, of whatever we say, the body of Christ, the body of Christ. Mm. It's a beautiful language, by the way. <laughs> but let's, let's just get down to, to the chase, okay. the chase here. Mm -hmm. What is the foundation of the modern-day Christian? Church. When they say you are successful, or mm -hmm. when they say this is the true church, etc., what are the qualities that formulate the modern perception mm -hmm. of what people think a church is like, vis-a-vis okay. -vis what it real must be like? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll take you uh, to the Bible uh, talks about uh, 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 Zachariah. Mm who was married, uh, who married uh, Elizabeth. And mm. the Bible said they had a child, mm. uh, John the Baptist. John the Baptist, yes. The Bible says when Elizabeth was pregnant, mm. Zachariah went into the temple mm. and he got into the holy place to mm. go and hear from God. He got into the inner uh, uh, chambers mm. of, the, of the temple. The most holy place. The most holy place mm. to go and get a message from God. Mm. Nobody had access to that place, remember. Mm. Nobody had access to that place. The church was waiting outside. Mm. To hear what is it that God is saying behind, behind the curtain? Behind the curtains. Yeah, man. So, so, so they didn't have access to what was happening behind the curtains. Mm. And look at this. God, the Bible says, an angel spoke to uh, Zachariah and said, "You shall have a son." Mm. And then he didn't believe the message. Mm. So we have a lot of people who, who preach, but they still don't believe what the, they've heard behind what, the what they've heard behind the curtains. I'm not yet done. I'm coming. Yeah, man, I can hear you. <laughs> and then. When, 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 when he did not believe that, mm. the Bible says God made him to be mute. Yes. He cut his speech. In other words, that's a pastor being disqualified. That's a pastor being fired. Mm. So we have got pastors who are still operating, but they were fired. Mm. They know how to speak, but the, the, the authority, they're, they're just wearing the uniform. Mm. The other time I preached a message, the stolen uniform. They are wearing a stolen uniform. Mm. They were fired and they were supposed to return the uniform, but they took the uniform with them. Mm. So when it comes out of that place, I believe at that time there was about to be a separation of people who did not have access to the holy of holies, to the holy place, to the most holy place. Mm. A separation when John the Baptist is now coming to be a forerunner of Jesus, to say now I'm introducing a new chapter a new era mm. and a new covenant altogether. Mm. But before he comes, even the one whom his sandals are not fit to wear, mm. I baptize you with water, but the one who's coming will baptize you in the spirit and all that. Mm. So I, I'm getting to the part where Jesus comes, he gets baptized, he, get in, he gets into ministry, he goes to Egypt, Africa, as you mentioned, he comes back, he goes to the cross. The Bible says something very important. When he was on the cross, the Bible says the veil was torn. Mm. The veil was torn in the most holy place. Mm. Why was the veil torn? It was torn so that the church can now have personal access to the most holy place. Is, is it true when these pastors uh -huh. come to you and say, God has said, the veil was torn? I like that. Part. Now you can enter for yourself. Don't wait for a, a Bishop Maponga to come and say, I felt God saying 2020 will be a great year. I felt God saying I didn't say that. 2020. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't no, know what you're talking I'm about. I'm pulling your leg. <laughs> you know, God is saying, have access by yourself. Mm. Enter into the Holy of Holies. Mm. Enter into the holy place by Preach, yourself. Preacher. Remove the preacher from the altar. Remove the, remove the prophet who says, that says the Lord, because you don't have proof that God has spoken. When I get excited also, mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've used this one in the okay. past, where uh, <laughs> the, pri the priests were the only group of people okay. in Israel mm -hmm. who would actually diagnose uh, leprosy right. without contracting leprosy. Okay, okay. And uh, the theology there... <laughs> Is that when you go behind the curtain? Okay, okay. And you meet the power mm -hmm, at the mm -hmm, altar mm -hmm. behind the curtain. Mm. It immunizes you right. for the services mm. you must do outside Ooh. the curtain. 
Now, if you have not yet been behind the curtain, you, you cannot service mm. in the outer courts. Come on, preacher. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, no, hey, my hey. small little girl. If, if you have not been behind the curtain, Corona, you are not the man. You, you can't do it. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> after the break, after okay. the break, we'll be coming back to be digging deeper into the concept of miracles, uh, true miracles and fake miracles. Another phenomenon that South Africa has seen in the past few months and few years where snakes, uh, flower, flowers are being eaten, grass is being chewed, Petrol is being drunk, doom is on the face of the members, cars are being driven on top of members, or oh, some people have tried to resurrect others from the dead, all in the name of the Lord. After the break, here with Jay Israel, live on the chair on your program Sankofa. We'll be back after the break. Tech Talk brought to you by Tamani Technologies and Systems. Tamani Technologies and Systems takes leadership in fourth industrial revolution. The whole world is facing a transformation. The revolution will be developed into the following stages. Digitization, cyber security, internet of things, managed services, document management, and business applications. We provide business transformation and ICT solutions with presence in 13 African countries and two European countries. We are your leading partner in integrated platform providers, innovation leaders, standalone products, and innovation pace setters. Tamani Technologies and Systems, delivering value across continents. Feel the heat. Chicken portions are an easy way to feed a crowd. I've just started to incorporate all my ingredients. We're gonna put this inside of a hot cast iron skillet. You wanna really fill up on great protein. It's now time to sample the chef's dish. Mm -hmm. Look at this. I know. Like that? Feel the excitement. The chicken is on the spot. Feel the heat with Starset. Oh, we are catching fire here in the studio here with uh, Pastor J. Israel taking us through some paces on the greater theological space. Hey, she's going to get heated up now. <laughs> we have talked about finances being yes. a problem in the yes. church. Yes. You have gone on to introduce us to mm -hmm. the calling. What is a calling? What is not a calling? Yeah. You have gone on also to in introduce us the power of mm -hmm. hearing mm -hmm. a voice behind the curtain. Yeah. But we will not have finished this show mm -hmm. before we talk about also the issue of... Uh, uh, gimmicks, okay. uh, fake miracles, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and all this. Uh, they call me a charlatan mm. for rebuking them. Okay. But they don't want to call each other charlatan <laughs> for doing mischief uh -huh. in the name of Jesus. All right. Let us dive into this issue okay. of the obsession mm -hmm. of the modern Christian church, particularly Pentecostalism mm -hmm. and evangel evangelicals. Okay. Their obsession with the manifestation mm. of the power of God so that there must always be something extraordinary mm. that must happen. What has happened to the simplicity of the gospel, mm. that you can preach the gospel mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and walk away. Mm. And the miracle is that someone goes home and says, the mm. Lord spoke to me. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Did not, did not our hearts move within us when he spoke amongst mm. us, mm. the men from Emmaus? Right. Did, what happened to the purity <clears throat> of the word spoken, mm. hearts being changed? Mm. What is it with this new miracle wave that mm, we see, mm, which to, mm, according to the modern churches mm, is a manifestation right, of the power of God? Right, Whereas right. the power of God, according to me, mm. is the change of heart. Come on, come on, come on. Not the manifestation. You are a genius All right. from your history where you're coming from, <laughs> for having lived in this space where this kind of stuff used to happen. Mm -hmm. And I think you owe it to the certain people out there maybe to come out clean for some few moments okay. and, and tell us exactly maybe not with no many details but okay. what used to happen in that space and how would you look at it 
in retrospect okay. because we know that hindsight is mm -hmm. always 2020. Mm -hmm. The, the, there's a question that you paused just before we took a break. You, you said, what, what is the church? What is the basis of the church? Well, mm. How is the church supposed to look like? Mm. I gave you an example of uh, Jesus, uh, the, torn, uh, the, the, the veil being torn into two, mm. people having access to the Holy of Holies. Mm. You know, so, so I believe that uh, 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 this is how the church is supposed to be. Matthew mm. chapter 6, verse 33. Mm. Now seek ye first mm. the kingdom of God mm. and his righteousness. Mm. And all these things mm. shall be added unto you. Mm. Now, 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 we, 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 we are so obsessed as a, 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 you know, as a church. We've got this obsession for the things. Mm. Yet the Bible makes it very clear that now seek ye first the kingdom. Mm. Now, when you have entrance, uh, uh, when you have, uh, uh, <laughs> when you enter into the kingdom, mm. and now it's not just about the kingdom; it's the also about righteousness. You know, so the church lacks. Kingdom mindset, mm. that's number one. Righteousness part mm. is not there in the church. Mm. That is why we have uh, 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 run away from the kingdom, righteousness, and we want the things. Mm. So we are so the church in love. is not founded on things. Mm -hmm. We are so in love with the gift. So in other words, I, I, I usually say that in our churches today, nowadays, we have got people who, are, uh, who, who should be called a, 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 a spiritual prostitutes. They go for the gifts, but they do not have love for the giver of the gifts. God is the giver of the things. Mm. So the church does not have love for the giver of the things, but they we want, want the, the gifts. Things. That is why the church is being taken for a ride in terms of miracles. If you come today and you say, I can perform uh, signs and wonders and money can appear from nowhere, people will flock. Because they are after things, not after the. But why not make things? the money flow flow? Why not make the money appear in your own private house and have that money to yourself? Why must you show us miracle money in church and you collect tithe after that <laughs> when you can create the miracle money? <laughs> you pardon my critical Charity mind. Charity begins at home. That's very true, Bishop. If you can perform the miracle, let it start with you. Let it start at your come house. Come to church mm -hmm. with briefcases of yes, money. Yes. And give the people money. Mm. Because I grew up in the olden days mm. where there were these masalamos. Mm -hmm. Had a gabra, had a gabra, bra, had a gabra, bra, 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 and someone mm. picks up eggs underneath your bum or pick up some cards and whatever and mm. cause things to appear which are not there. Mm. But I no longer see those guys these days on the streets. I guess they are now running churches. Mm. They, they, they left. It's, it's no longer working. Because they were so much attracted to the spiritual gold diggers who are mm. in church. We've got gold diggers in church. We've got gold diggers mm. in the church. Spiritual gold diggers. A gold digger is somebody who's after the gold, but that does not want to be part of the processing of the gold. Give us your honest opinion gold. about these miracles that are taking place these days. 99%. Cut, 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 cut. Uh, cut. Uh -huh. Yes, you have my permission. Okay. 99% of the miracles that you see on TV, they are fake. Fake They are arranged miracles. Organized miracles. Organized miracles. I come from that background. I know these things. You know, I've, of, of late, those who follow me will know that I've been dealing uh, 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 vehemently, severely, mm. you know, with charlatans, you know, mm. exposing how these things are done. Because So what used to happen at the back there? You used to organize wheelchairs? Miracles, and... you know, uh, people are paid to come and fake miracles in church. You see people coming to sit on, uh, you, you know, the pastor will say, you are healed in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, receive your healing. You see people running, coming, wheelchairs are being lifted. It's just an act. It's an act because the one who's performing the so-called miracles mm -hmm. is, not a, is not called. Remember, he does not have experience of behind the curtain, what mm -hmm. you spoke about. Oh, wow. There is no behind the curtain experience. Mm -hmm. So because there is no behind the curtain experience, he is now like an Aaron. He mm -hmm. wants to manufacture the power of God mm -hmm. by manufacturing a golden calf, just mm -hmm. like Aaron. Mm -hmm. To say, now because we don't have the real thing, let's manufacture it. Let's manufacture. Prophecies are manufactured. People are called. Prophecies are manufactured. Prophecies are manufactured. Are manufactured. You know, that that is why you see that none of the prophecies that they release about years, mm. say 2020 will be this, 2019 is going to be good. It's your year. We are in trouble. It's I saw another year. cartoon the other day, <laughs> these two boys standing behind a wall, mm -hmm. were waiting With to stone stones. a pastor, and they said, waiting for the pastor who said, this <laughs> was your year. <laughs> <laughs> so we have lots of fake miracles. A that lot are of fake miracles, and I can tell you that um, South African pastors are in it, They've been, you know, introduced into faking of miracles. Mm. You know, pastors from outside, prophets from outside, actually. I can tell you right now, mm. without any uh, fear or favor, that in South Africa, 
we probably have 0.01% of true prophets. And all of the ones you see performing miracles on TV, they are fake. I have proof of that. Hey, my daughter. This is getting a bit hectic right here. I have here. proof of that. Fake miracles fake running miracles. the churches. Yeah. We would have failed on this show if we also don't talk about the role of women. Mm -hmm. They are the vulnerable. In, in any church, you yeah. always find that it's 60, 80% women mm -hmm. who are there for various reasons, True. marriage, poverty, and various issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what do you think, what do you think is the, is the, has, has been their plight? And what are they looking for mm -hmm. when they are filling up the churches? And how has the ministries, mm -hmm. pastors, mm -hmm. treated women? I'll, I'll say um, for, 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 for a very long time, women have always looked for solutions. Mm in the church and in the process of them looking for solutions mm. different solutions life problems whatever marriage uh, whatnot you know the women feel that there is hope mm. in church there is but in the process of looking for that hope and comfort mm. they are abused that is why we have got all these pastors raping women you know they are being taken advantage of mm. in the name of prayer. So a picture of a pastor was fondling mm. the woman's breasts, yes, you know, yes, in, in the, and touching the private part yeah. in the name of prayer. That is nonsense. Mm. That is uh, 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 that is that is that is nonsense, Bishop. Mm. The, such things like you know. So women have been taken advantage of for the longest time, mm. simply because the Bible makes it very clear that women are weaker vessels, mm. and because they are weaker vessels, now men are you know masculine, strong. They always want to take advantage of these women. Mm. But I can. Uh, I tell you right now that to all the women who are watching right now, mm. women in ministry, uh, uh, we have gone looking for spiritual fathers and in the process of looking for uh, spiritual fathers, they were abused. Mm. Don't give up, you know. You are called and you serve a specific purpose in the body of Christ. Mm. You know, if you are called by God and you are in ministry, by mm. the way, by the way, before I, I, I give it back to you, mm. anointing, calling is not sexually transmitted. You marry a prophet, you are not a prophetess. You marry a pastor, you are not a pastoress. You marry an apostle, you are not an apostoless. If you marry a bishop, what are you, a bishopess? <laughs> if you marry a teacher, what are you, a teacheress? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Anointing yeah. is not sexually, not sexually transmitted. transmitted. Coming back to women, mm. you know, I want to encourage all the women out there mm. who are in ministry, who are looking for help, mm. be mindful of where you go to look for help. Mm. You can also pray on your own before you go and look for a spiritual father to pray for you. So women have been taken advantage of, abused, and a lot of nonsense has happened in the church. Mm. And unfortunately, you know, unfortunately, wow. mm. it's quite unfortunate. While you're on that, while you're on that, I mm. want to understand you yeah. and together with the viewers out okay. there okay. who might be asking almost a similar question mm. what I'm asking now. Mm -hmm. Why is the modern church allergic mm -hmm. to confrontation, to rebuke, to advise, mm. to critique, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's almost like we could be messing up, but it is not in your space to either rebuke, mm. correct. It's almost like leave us alone. Right. Don't, don't, don't talk about it. Don't fix it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it it's mm -hmm. perfect as it is. Right. But as you're saying right mm -hmm. now, the picture you're painting mm -hmm, is not a picture of 0.001%. Mm -hmm. It's not a good picture that mm -hmm. you can walk mm -hmm. past as a man of God and say, leave it the way it is. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the cause mm -hmm. of the attitude of the greater church and ministers, bishops and archbishops, etc.? Why are modern ministers allergic to confrontation, rebuke and correction? The, when the word the, of the Lord says, <laughs> the word <laughs> is good, first Timothy, right. the word mm -hmm. is good for correction, mm -hmm. profitable, for mm. advice, right. to equip mm. and to train, mm. Mm. To, so that the men of God can be equipped mm. for all righteous mm. acts. Come on. So Come if on. the text says mm. the word mm. is a mm. two edged sword, mm. cutting, mm. deficing mm. the perception, the morals, the motives of the heart, and etc., has the church now become allergic to the word? Has the church now become becoming, you know, too righteous mm. to an extent that they cannot take advice and correction from anybody. We, the day we entered church, we left our brains at the door. And the day we left our brains at the door, mm. we started feeding off from someone who's saying, everything that I'm saying is the absolute truth. Mm. So we have been taught to believe everything but we have never been taught to question everything. The day I started questioning things, mm. that was the day my eyes opened. My eyes opened to tithe, collection of tithe. My mm. eyes opened to seed people giving. I realized that, hey, 
for the longest time, mm. I've been stealing money in the name of God. Mm. I've been collecting money in the name of God, yet it's not supposed to be like that. Where did I learn it from? Mm. I learned it from a certain person mm. who made me to believe that this is how it is. Mm. But the day I began to question, everything changed. I started having a personal understanding of how things are supposed to be. On that same note, Romans 1, 16, the Bible says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. gospel. It's the power of it God. It is the power of unto God. Salvation. Unto salvation. To everyone who believes to the Jew, then to the Gentiles. Hey, so therein the righteousness right, of God is shown right. from faith to faith. Come, Come on, on, Richard. Come on. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not worried about all the other parts. Yeah. It is the power of God unto salvation. Mm. Any gospel that does not lead, lead you to salvation, to salvation is chaff, it is rubbish, now you are with it me is now. nonsense. The African people uh -huh. want salvation. Right. What is the problem and what solution does the gospel bring? This is where many of my friends, mm -hmm. we part ways mm -hmm. because they don't understand me. I like the verse mm -hmm. you've given us. Mm -hmm. The power of God unto salvation. Uh -huh. And the word salvation there translated mm -hmm. soteria mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. redemption, mm -hmm. Come on. redeem, which is go on. Mm -hmm. You find something burning mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. fire, mm -hmm. you pull it out of the pull fire, of the you fire. extinguish it, uh -huh. then you set it aside right. for a holy right. use. That's right. sanctification. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you find the African in the fire, mm -hmm. colonial fire, mm -hmm. economic fire, mm -hmm. political fire, mm -hmm. and the salvation comes, mm -hmm. my interpretation, mm -hmm. It must come to the African. Come on. And pull him out uh -huh. from the fireplace. Mm -hmm. Extinguish him mm. from his pain. Mm. Store him aside mm. as a unique particular mm. person. Mm. What mm. role do you think modern Christianity mm. and religion is playing by watching Africa roasting in the furnace of oppression, mm. colonialism? The government wants 14%. Right. Pastor right. wants 10%. Mm. Second tithe is 10%. Mm. Offering, Offering is another 10, is another 15%. One. Pastors give another. another. The one. man goes mm. home with 30% and the Lord must bless him on the 30%. Mm. The government and the church have become criminals mm. who are reducing the quality of life mm -hmm. of the audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is the role of the church in keeping people in that fire? Mm. A, 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 a bishop, I'll put it this way. You know, the, 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 the day that we, we stopped as the church, the day that the church... Mm -hmm. a, a stopped, or rather, let me just put it uh, uh, bluntly. The, the church no longer has a voice to address the economic problems of the, of the saints. So you're saying the political, church has lost its voice? The, 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 the if the church had a voice, mm. we were going to have political leaders who are believers. Mm. We were going to have political leaders who are anointed by God. Mm. Remember, in those days, prophets were the ones who were assigned by God mm. to say, for David, for Saul, I have rejected. Mm. David, I have appointed. Mm. Go and anoint David in secret. Mm. There is nobody in our time with authority to anoint a David in secret who's going to take over in public. So politically, the church has lost the voice. Mm. That is why we are governed by thieves. We are governed by robbers. Mm. Look at Zimbabwe right now. Political injustice. People are dying day in and day out. The church is quiet. Mm. What is the church doing? Collecting offerings, mm. collecting tithes. Mm. From who? From people who are being oppressed by the church and also being oppressed by the government. Mm. Can I ask you a question? Uh -huh. When will you as pastors open a bank? Just all of you. You're all men of God. <laughs> You've been called by the same boss. Uh -huh. You all are in the spirit mm -hmm. on the Lord's mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. All of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When are you as pastors... Just surprise me, surprise me. When are you as pastors mm -hmm. going to open just one bank <laughs> where every Sunday we can collect money from, okay. from Polaburwa, mm -hmm. Petersburg, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. To Eshowe, mm -hmm. Kwasulu Natal. You know, those are big changes I'm talking right, about. Right, right. I, I hear you. I hear you. You know what I'm talking about? I hear you. To Cape Town. Exactly. And we put all that thing together so that mm -hmm. our members mm -hmm. can have access mm -hmm. to resources. Mm. When is that going to happen? Mm. Hey, I, I don't see that happening anytime soon because we are running a, a, a personal businesses and family oh. businesses in the name of church. The day that we understand discipleship and relationship with God over religion, 
that is the day that all these initiatives will begin to come up. Why? Because greed will not be in the play anymore. Mm. No one will want to partner with you because I will know that if I come together with you, mm. those who are supposed to give me 50,000 will give me 25 and you take 25. And mm. because of greed, I keep my people, you keep your people. Mm. So we've got different empires running simultaneously in the body of Christ. Mm. So this one is running is short, this one is running is short. That is why we have got those who believe in Apollos mm. and those who believe in uh, uh, another one. You mm. know, so uh, <clears throat> the day that we, we, we demystify that, uh, that mystery, we, mm. we, we destroy that uh, 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 kind of system, mm. you know. We, we, we take out the business from church and we bring, you know, we bring Christ, mm. relationship, church, let it be church. Mm. Though that is the day that the church will be able to do such things like that. The Bible says your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. And the Bible also says, I don't dwell in houses that are built by men. Come on. Then why do we take people to church when they are already in church? Corona has proved it. <laughs> this season has proved it. Yeah. Do you know there are people who are watching right now? Mm. They're in church. They're in church yeah, right now. They're in church. They're in church. As we speak, they're mm. in church. So this is where I, I personally, I, I don't want to involve, I, I don't want to involve anyone. Mm. I'm not even involving you. Mm. Personally, I begin to question the, the importance of the building. Mm. You know, when this whole scenario started, because people can now worship from home mm. and they can tell you 100%. I've seen testimonies online, on mm. Facebook, everywhere. People saying, ever since lockdown started, my relationship with has God become better. has become better than the days I used to go to church. Wow. Interesting. You are now the president of South Africa or the president of Zimbabwe. Uh, what are the three top things that you'd wish to change in the country? Let me take you to Zimbabwe. Uh, to Zimbabwe? Yes. Give me just three okay. shots. Take three shots. Mm -hmm. mm. First thing that I'll do in Zimbabwe, I'll shut down all the false prophetic churches. Jesus. I'll shut down Jesus. all the churches being led <laughs> by charlatans. Mm. I'll shut them down. That's the priority. Mm. And I'll set those people free because they're in bondage. That's right number now. one. They're mm. in bondage, but they don't see it mm. because they believe the pastor more than they believe in God. Mm. That's the first one. The mm. second one, I'll look at the politicians, how they live. I'll take all their big houses mm. and turn them into orphanages. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I like I'll, I'll even take the big houses and the big uh, 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 churches and, mm. you know, all those big auditoriums that they've built. Mm. I'll turn them into malls. Into malls? Yeah. Wow. I'll turn them into malls. I'll create employment for the people. You know, a church is about a relationship with God. In one minute, your advice to all fellow pastors out there. Give them a message. What do you want to tell your fellow pastor? Um, I would like to say to all the fellow pastors out there, let us stand for the truth. Let us stand for the truth. I say no to manipulation, mm -hmm. no to deception, mm -hmm. no to theft, mm -hmm. spiritual theft. You know, physical I say theft. physical theft. Mm. I say no to uh, 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 oppressing the people. Mm. And finally, I would like to say, let my people go. One word for the members out there. Mm. Be as wise as serpents. Mm. For the devil is out there, camouflaging himself like the believers and like the saints. They are wolves in sheep's uh, clothing, have discernment. Last word, people who have known Israel for the longest of time. What should they expect going forward from what they used to know about you in the past? It's all about Jesus. Mm. It's all about Christ. My message is Christocentric. Mm. My message is Christocentric. Uh, all my principles in terms of my work with Christ, mm. you know, they are, devi are derived from the Pauline Gospels, Pauline Epistles. Mm. That's what I follow, you know. Uh, mm do justice to people, mm. love one another, mm. walk in love, mm. you know, rebuke sharply, mm. not just rebuke, rebuke sharply mm. where there is need. So to everybody who has known me for the longest time, it's time to go back to Christ. Mm. Yeah. Well, you heard it for yourself today, my honorable guest, uh, Jay Israel, uh, spitting fire and brimstone there, cleaning up the house, kicking out the kicking out the tables in the greater Christian space, aligning the body of Christ to what it was intended to be. And some of you are listening out there who are Christians. At least I brought someone for you who can relate with you. And if we can rebuild the church with the book of Acts mm. as it was in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And if you know very well, if you can take a piece of cloth and you tear it, it holds it at the back, mm. right at the end there. So that the church of the beginning must also have the strength of the church of the last days. 
and we must stop stealing money from members. Right. And uh, you must look after the poor, look after the orphans, share your resources with the greater community. And having said all that, it is important that we represent the community well and we must be sensitive to the pain and the tears of the communities that we are leading. That's all I had for you for today with uh, Pastor Jay Israel all the way from Durban. I think I'll bring him again. He's quite a nice, wonderful, lovely fella here. <laughs> wonderful pastor. I wish you all the best in your ministry. Thank you. And thank you very much for spending some time with us here on thank the show. You. Thank you. The for people having me. love you. My handle has been ringing off the hook. <laughs> your host and uh, your host, Maponga Jay here. Garamboko Makumbo mwana mwesende we shawani wana matanga kugara chukwe chite zaachino kugwa na wana manga waripedo wano tamba na cho chirira na wana wewa anji tiswa wana magara mawe okay, matanda mm, anobora mm, mm. wila miti ya usose until we see you again don't do what I wouldn't do if you do it, do it better <laughs>